Today we're going to talk about the idea of resting to heal the cartilage in your knee or your hip. I got this message from Janet who said, I was told I could regrow cartilage if I quit walking and gave it a chance to regrow slash heal or use a cane or brace instead. Your thoughts? This email made me really mad and it made me bad because it displays exactly the kind of ignorance that circulates the medical system all the time. And I'm going to explain why this really, really pissed me off with a story that seems somewhat unrelated, but will quickly become related. So last year, uh, as many of you know, my mother passed away. During that journey, we went through all kinds of discussions with her physician. And her physician at some point was trying to help with her dementia symptoms and trying to help with anxiety symptoms and recommended that we do something with a certain brain drug and bump up the dose. And he didn't tell us that doing that had a downside risk. And that downside risk was that my mom could actually be bedridden and paralyzed due to basically completely destroyed coordination and balance. So that happened. He upped the dose, she started taking more, and then she was stuck in bed. She could not get out of bed, couldn't move, couldn't balance. After a week of this had gone by, I was on the phone with the doctor saying, what is the deal? Like, is she dying? What's happened? And he told me, oh, no, no, this is, this is actually just a normal potential side effect for when you use too much of this drug. And I said, it would have been nice to know that, like what's going to happen now that she's been bedridden for a week in her mid seventies. What about the muscle loss that's going to happen? Because muscle loss is extremely fast when you are old. It's extremely fast when you are not eating, when you are not taking in protein, when you are not exercising or moving your body. And I said, what, how long is this going to go on and what are we going to do when she has no muscle tone left? She was already, you know, losing muscle and atrophying because she's already older and not getting so much exercise. And he said, oh, oh don't, don't worry, it should be fine. Once the drug is out of her system, she'll be fine again. And hearing that made me so mad because the reality, the reality is that that's not true, right? In his mind, oh yeah, you know, whatever, the muscle will grow back, but that, that didn't happen, right? It can't happen, especially as you get older, unless you are putting in the work to maintain and rebuild the muscle, right? And why is that important? Because the muscles are what move the bones, the muscles are what move the body. So if you let the muscles waste away, if you, you basically paralyze somebody and put them in bed, or you say, stop using these muscles, what happens is you lose the ability to move. So now we look at this advice to Janet. I was told if I quit walking and gave, it a, gave my cartilage a chance to regrow and heal, uh, you know, I could get better. Well, that's, that's a nice sentiment if, in fact, the cartilage is the limiting factor for somebody being able to walk and move. But large-scale studies have shown that the damage in hip cartilage, the damage in your knee cartilage, the, the, the grade of severity of arthritis doesn't actually correlate with symptoms, which means that that cartilage damage that you're seeing is not the thing to be focusing on, right? You're, you're, th this whole belief that the, this tiny little, I don't need, what do I got? You know, this tiny little amount of cushioning and padding between your bones, that's determining everything about whether or not you can move your knee or your hip joint. And that's been shown pretty conclusively by large scale studies to not be the case. But this doctor, this whatever health practitioner is telling her, mm, it's your cartilage. So just rest. And how long? How long should you rest? Well, Janet didn't mention how long she was told to rest, but I've heard from many people, I've experienced it myself, it's like, take a month, take two months, take three months. And I want you to just think about this for a second. Maybe you've broken a bone before. Maybe you broke, you know, your wrist or your, I broke my pinky once and, you know, had my, my hand in a cast, my whole forearm in a cast for a while. 
think back to that time when you completely immobilize a bunch of muscles, how quickly do they disappear? Okay, think about all the muscles around your leg and hip. What happens, do you suppose, if you take two months, three months of rest and stop using those muscles? Do you think you'll have more muscles? Do you think you'll have better coordination? If the problem is in fact the muscles, that your muscles are too weak, too stiff, to lack the coordination, to move the joint correctly, do you think that anything is gonna get better? The answer is no, right? Because if, if the muscles are the problem, you're in big trouble now because you just allowed, you forced all the muscles around your joints to atrophy and atrophy aches. Now, if it's the cartilage, the cartilage is really the problem. Okay, well, does anybody have any evidence that just resting actually will regrow the cartilage? Because I would love to see it. And then I'd love to see a study that actually shows that if in fact the cartilage does regrow after two, three months of just pure rest, that that actually improves function of the joint. And I'm pretty sure that study doesn't exist. And I'll just provide you a counter example. If you look at astronauts who exist in zero gravity, they're not getting a lot of impact, right? They, that's probably the best situation to allow the, the cartilage to regrow. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever studied what happens to the cartilage, maybe they have. Let's say it does regrow. Maybe when they're in zero gravity, you know, the cartilage is like, woof, yes, let's grow, we are cartilaginous. Great, but what happens when astronauts return to Earth having had no resistance from gravity, having just been floating around in space. Their bodies and bones don't act as strongly as they did before because they were not actively loading their muscles and bones. So astronauts actually have to spend a great deal of time carefully reacclimating to gravity, building up strength, building up bone density, building up their bodies so that they can move again. Because if you're not fighting against resistance and maintaining and growing muscle, you are doing the opposite. There's no just like, oh, easy stasis. You don't just maintain muscle if you aren't using it. The muscles will die. So my answer to Janet was basically what you just heard. Should you just rest and rest and rest? Absolutely not. You should respect the limits of your body, right? So if you're hurting, you're not gonna go hammer your knee more and just like keep trying to do a, you know, a, a marathon. But you need to be actively training, actively troubleshooting, stretching, resistance training, figuring out what your muscles need so that your hips or your knees can function better. Not just sitting on your butt hoping and praying that somehow the rest is gonna regrow some anatomical piece that based on, on actual scientific investigation doesn't actually factor in, or if it does, it doesn't factor in much to the amount of pain or function that you have. I will link to the relevant papers that I'm talking about in the description box. So before you start jumping on me and saying I'm making stuff up, please read those. It's very important for you to understand that there is massive discordance between what you see in terms of cartilage and damage and all that and your actual function. That's been, that's been the established case for the spine. That's why spinal surgery is not as strongly recommended anymore, even though plenty of spinal surgeons will continue to do their spinal surgeries, even though the evidence is totally against it. Just remember this, okay? Do not get caught in rips. Rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery, there's, they're either temporary at best or, or highly questionably scientific and highly questionably effective when you actually start digging into the research. So I hope this has helped you. If you have more questions, if you loved this video, I'd like to hear about it, drop me a comment down below. If you wanna support this channel, 
use the link for making a donation, find me on Patreon, use the join or thanks buttons on YouTube. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference. I appreciate it. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>